Hey guys, welcome to another episode of How to Be a 3D Animator. In this video, we're going to be talking about Kristoff's new rig. You guys may know him from his Zelda rig, the one right here, the one I made a video on. So this side, this, I, I think, well, we're just going to go with this side. But this time, he modeled and rigged, wait for it, Ruby. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, this one. So, just before we jump in, uh, I actually wanted to make a quick little announcement. Uh, I promise I'll make it quick and then we'll just jump right in. So pretty much as some of you may have already known, uh, I didn't actually make a video last week and that's because I've been slaving away trying to make this jump animation lesson, like a workshop thing. And what it is, is essentially consists of an hour long analysis and just like me just sapping into my brain and just like spewing out everything I know about like making a jump animation and my entire process. So like as we go through like the first blocking, I like talk about it, I bring it to Sig Sketch, I draw, I go through like every single phase and I, t I draw on top of the animation. I talk about what needs fixing and what we did wrong and what we need to improve on and why and my entire like thought process. Um, so on top of that one hour thing, um, I I'm also going to be releasing the... I think it's like three hours of just like just raw footage. It's like me going from the from start to finish. I like stitch them all together, and it's like a three hour raw footage of that. Um, so basically, what the little workshop thing consists consists of is how to set up your workspace, how to set up really really useful hotkeys to help you like make animate a little not animate faster, but just help your workflow become a little smoother. And I actually share with you guys two of the hotkeys I use myself. I'll share the code with you. We go through uh, how to reference your character in we go through how to bring your reference video in um, and then finally finally we reach the jump animation thing that i talked about which is like it's like 40 minutes of just like me analyzing a jump and just like it, trust me you will definitely take something from it and the thing is this kind of like class format is impossible on youtube so i've gone two ways with it one is you could either purchase the lesson on gumroad and I've, I've put a very fair price for like the amount of blood, sweat, and tears that, that came from making this. I, I don't think I've gotten like a sleep in like, I think I've like barely slept in like a week and a half now almost, something like that. Just like trying to like plan it and trying to make it as like optimized and as, as well as I can. That, that's one route. The other route is like this will actually be available for, I guess, like, if you're a Patreon, this will be available to you for free. Like, it doesn't matter what tier Patreon. If you're a Patreon, I'm also uploading this there as well. But yeah, I just wanted to get this out of the way. I'll have the links in the description for you guys. So back to the rig thing. For Kristoff, I'll have his link in the description too. Uh, if you guys are gonna use his rig, and trust me, it's, it's an amazing rig. It's, it's like really similar to the Zelda rig we reviewed before. If you're gonna use his rig, make sure to donate because for him it is fan art and he can't actually make money off of it. So donating is his way of actually getting something back from putting the work in. Um, but yeah, let's just jump in. Alright, let's see what we got here. So, one thing to keep in mind with this rig is that, uh, well first of all, this is very much like the Zelda rig we reviewed uh, in like two, two, no, like three weeks ago, four weeks ago. I'll have it linked in the top right if you guys want to take a look at that as well. Um, so this is really similar to that. I believe he used the same um, rig skeleton as Zelda. There's just a few small changes. Um, I'm not I can't remember if we had the same thing on Zelda, but on this rig we have a Lot of facial controls, which is which I'm like a huge fan of that, but So this is this is amazing. It has a lot more. We have a lot more control with the mouth and with the, the face itself I'm not sure if uh, the Zelda rig had as much controls as this rig, but regardless um, the one thing I was going to mention is that with this rig, it's two separate files. So when you, what you reference in, so let me go to my graph editor, or sorry, my outliner, you reference in Ruby, um, but Ruby doesn't come with a weapon. So you get two files. So what you have to do is go in and reference the crescent rows as well. Uh, so that's a completely separate file that comes in, but you got to be careful with the controls. Like if you guys select any of these, you can move them. And I'm not sure if that's something you want to do for per se, because uh, so the, as, uh, if you guys watch the show, you'd know that this is a pretty cool looking Sith. 
scythe. <laughs> Very good looking scythe, but it's not just that. It actually, if we select this main control, we have the option to collapse it. But then, once it's collapsed, you have the option to max out gun mode. And how freaking cool is that? It just turns into a gun, as it does in the show. So the scythe turns into a gun. And um, the one thing is, if you guys don't collapse it, so let's just go back real quick into scythe mode. If you guys don't collapse it and you just max out gun mode, it'll end up just collapsing it. So you'd have to have collapse maxed out as well as gun mode. And it turns to a gun. And that's pretty freaking cool. But yeah, so that's like, that's honestly the biggest difference between the two rigs and maybe the facial controls. Um, so it's the same situation where we have the plus sign as the center of gravity. Or if you guys know, usually rigs have center of gravity here. But this thing, this core, as you guys can see, it's called core. This thing isn't actually a center of gravity. This thing just moves the entire character from the core area and you can rotate it from the core area. So this is more for like vertical movement and like movement through it's like parkour or something, the character needs to move around a lot, you can move it with this control right here. Um, so if we go to the core, just like the Zelda rig, we can we have the option to add stretch. And we also have the option to change this to FK. Now, uh, once again, once you change it to FK, you kind of lose your hip movement, your hip control. And so if you want to move your hip, it kind of moves the entire body, which is not something you want. Um, so once you select this very, very bottom control, you can change this into a hip control by isolating it. So I max out isolate hip, and now we have a proper hip control. Okay, um, so I just realized this character still doesn't have a texture. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to go to the outliner. I'm going to go to mesh, open this up, and click on... Ruby's hair. Now when I go all the way to the end, the last tab, um, you want to go to color and we're looking for Ruby hair. So click the folder, find the project folder and we want to go to textures and we're looking for Ruby hair underscore diffuse TGA. So Ruby hair underscore diffuse TGA, that's the one. Press open. Now our character has, wow, that's a really nice looking hair. <laughs> now our character has texture. So we're gonna, just gonna repeat the same thing for the mesh. Ruby Diffuse TGA. And there we go. And the texturing is actually really, really nice on this. Wow. Good job, man. Good job, Kristoff. This is amazing. Okay, now we just have the eyes left. So we're gonna find the eye. Ruby I underscore diffuse, Ruby I diffuse, and there we go. Now our character's textured. And I believe you have to do the same thing for the gun. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up in the outliner. Find mesh, open mesh up, click on it, and repeat. And voila, everything's textured. So again, like the Zelda rig. We have the gears on the legs and the arms. And what we can do with these, the options we have is we can either change them from FK to IK, which is perfect. That's what you need. We also can have the option to turn on and off stretch, which is amazing. And the other thing that I really loved about the Zelda rig is that you have the option to bend. So you have these extra controls showing up on your rig and this allows you to create really really nice uh, silhouettes so if you have a certain pose like let's say i don't know the leg is up but you want it to be in a nice curve you need it to be in like a nice nice curve so you can go ahead and move these around to try and create that nice curve you were looking for which wouldn't be possible if you just had those basic controls so that's one thing I love about this one as well. Okay, and of course, once we go to the gear up here, we have 
the ability to turn on all the controls for the skirt and for the, the bullet tap controls too. Yes, they do. Oh, that's the belt. Okay, cool. And each individual bullet as well. Yes, that's awesome. Each individual bullet has controls as well. Um, the skirt has controls, and I, the, the cape I assume should have controls. Yeah, cloak controls. There we go. That's a decent bit of controls too. Okay, that's good. Um, but yeah, so the only criticism I would really have would be uh, this control right here. So the main control for the weapon is kind of really easy to miss. You have two controls pretty much on top of each other. And it's just, it's really hard to click in between the two. Like for example, in some of the, some of the cuts of me doing the rig review was me trying to select the big controller I ended up keep selecting the small one and so the options don't come up on the small one so you, you have to click the bigger one for you to be able to switch between the gun and the sight and so my only criticism would be to just differentiate these two controls from one another because they're kind of really really hard to click in between and they're the main controls so maybe if it was a different shape, or if it was just slightly bigger, and one was slightly smaller, um, it would be easier, but as of right now, it's kind of really hard to click between the two. Uh, aside from that, um, everything else seems pretty perfect. The eye, of course, is amazing. You have the option for blinks, which is really good. Well, it goes even wider. Uh, you have the option for auto lid. That means, like we had it, we had the uh, eyelids following the eye direction. So if we turn it off now and move it around, the eyelids won't move with the eye. But once we turn it on, the eyelids move with the eye, which is awesome. And it gives a really good, lively feeling. All right, I, I try to make this as uh, quick as I could. I'm sorry if I rambled too much. Yeah, I'm, I'm seriously loving this rig. If you guys share my love for this rig as well, you can go ahead and download it in the link in the description. I'll put it in there, don't worry. And if you're feeling generous enough, do consider donating to Kristoff. And if you don't want to donate to Kristoff, you can buy my course. I'm kidding. Uh, so <laughs> uh, you don't have to, but since it is fan art for him, you know, he's not, he can't make any money off of it. And I'm sure this took many, many hours, uh, many, many weeks probably. So I'm sure he would appreciate it if you donated a little bit to him. Um, with that out of the way, I hope you guys have some fun with this rig. If you do make something, share it with me. Maybe upload it to your channel or have it on a drive and message me or comment in the comment section. I would love to take a look at what kind of animations you guys make. And with that out of the way, happy animating, and I will see you guys in the next video.